Paulina parked the car on the sidewalk. She got out and walked towards the bridge. Five years ago, a serious accident happened there, in which her husband Ricardo lost his life. In reality, the accident was his fault. Ricardo's vehicle veered into the opposite lane and collided with another car, which flipped several times and fell off a cliff. Meanwhile, Paulina couldn't forget that fateful day. She and Ricardo were returning from the hospital without exchanging a word, they had been arguing all week since Ricardo found out Paulina was pregnant. She had managed to hide it from him for four months. He didn't want children, arguing it was too early, they didn't have their own house yet, and they weren't in a position to raise a baby. Paulina dreamed of having a son or daughter. Ricardo traveled for work for whole weeks, and it wasn't difficult for Paulina to hide the truth from him. But one night, he found out and started a scandal. We talked about this, we decided it's still too early for us to have children, said the husband. The wife replied, no, you decided everything, not me. Paulina shouted directly at her husband, you always make all the decisions for me, and I have to obey unconditionally, that's how it works. Your family's happiness is not the same for me. My happiness is in my children, and I will have this baby. If you don't want me, my child, I'll leave you right now. Shut up, shut up now. However, Paulina heard shouting as if it were distant. She sat down slowly on the ground, holding her belly in fear. Ricardo ran to the phone and called an ambulance. Paulina remained in the hospital for a whole week, and her husband visited her without mentioning the painful subject. She also remained silent, only when Ricardo took her home in his car after her discharge. She asked timidly, have you forgiven me for hiding this news from you? Ricardo then replied, without looking at her, the baby hasn't even been born yet, and we're already facing problems with everything, with your health, with your mood, and with our relationship. He will bring all sorts of problems for us. Now, you won't be able to give me all the attention I need. You'll be tired and nervous all the time, and the baby, he'll cry and scream incessantly. He won't let us sleep at night, and there are plenty of childhood illnesses. We'll have a girl, Paulina whispered softly. What? It's a girl too? Ricardo looked furiously at his wife. He was about to yell at her, but at that moment, the car hit a pothole, wrenching the steering wheel from Ricardo's hands. The next moment, the vehicle spun several times on the road and was thrown into the opposite lane, then the violent impact occurred, and Paulina lost consciousness. She didn't hear people screaming, nor the noise of cars, nor the sirens of police cars and ambulances. She was taken to the hospital unconscious. Doctors performed several surgeries on her, and later transferred her to the intensive care unit, where she regained consciousness a few days later. Her elderly mother sat beside her and took her arm. Happily, she said, my dear daughter, you've come to your senses. How old are you now? We need to move forward, you understand? You need to keep on living, my daughter. Where is Ricardo? Paulina asked. Her mother lowered her gaze, but then looked back at her daughter. We buried Ricardo. It's been five days since you were in a coma. All this time. Paulina's eyes filled with horror, but she didn't inquire about her husband and asked, My daughter, did she survive? Dear Paulina, you will have other children. The doctors did their best, but they could only save you, daughter. As soon as you're recovered, we'll take you back to our house in the city. Come home because you need this city. Let's, please, buy plane tickets. In a few hours, we'll be home, your father will pick us up from the airport. No, mother, I can't, I don't want to go anywhere. Paulina, soon you'll forget everything that happened there. You need to move on, overcome this, and continue with your life, my dear. Paulina cried, and her mother sat beside her, holding her hand with sadness. Five years passed, and Paulina often visited the accident site and stayed on the bridge for long periods. But she didn't think about her husband, she thought about her daughter, 
whom she never had the chance to hold in her arms. And in her heart, she never forgave Ricardo, she couldn't help but feel resentment towards him, and blamed herself for her weakness, for not being able to leave him on the same day he repeatedly stated that he didn't want children. Paulina started an internal dialogue with her memory, headed to the accident site, parked the vehicle by the side of the road, and walked towards the bridge. There was usually no one present. But this time, Paulina spotted the figure of a man standing on the bridge, looking down. At a distance, the woman paused briefly, but then decided to approach the bridge. She hoped the man would immediately move away, but suddenly understood the reason for his presence there. Extending her arm forward, Paulina ran towards the man standing on the bridge and began to plead with him not to do anything foolish. The man was about to lean over the bridge railing, but upon hearing her cry, he stepped back and looked at her with a vacant, distant gaze. What are you doing? Why are you thinking of doing this? You cannot, under any circumstances, give up on life, said Paulina. If I've lost my purpose in this existence, my hope, and my guidance, the stranger questioned. What if I can't bear this anguish anymore? What if all my happiness lies in the past? He continued. That question cannot be answered. What's your name? Paulina asked. Silvio, the man replied. Silvio, you're very young. I'm sure you haven't even reached 35. How can you speak about life with such hopelessness? Paulina said. Five years ago, my family died on this bridge. My wife and my son, who was only four years old, Silvio continued. Silvio's face was twisted with pain. And it was my fault, you know? I took my eyes off the road for a second to change the radio station and couldn't avoid the collision with the car coming towards me. My wife died instantly, my son died on the way to the hospital, and I survived. Why did things have to happen like this? Why didn't I die with them? If I hadn't been so distracted, I could have saved him. How can I live with this now? How can I move forward? Silvio lamented. You just need to keep living, Paulina replied. Someone needs your life, and your loved ones wouldn't understand if you were here now, about to kill yourself. You're a man, and you need to find the strength to be resilient. I also know sorrow, grief, and the loss of loved ones. But I found the strength to move forward with my life. My husband also died in an accident, and doctors brought me back from the brink of death, she said firmly, before suddenly falling silent. Paulina then realized that five years ago she couldn't avoid a collision with the car that crossed her path. Their car not only took the life of their unborn daughter, but also that man's family, and she was guilty of it too. The blame for the woman and child's death was hers, not Silvio's. Paulina remained silent and then fainted, but Silvio managed to hold her. When Paulina regained consciousness, she had no idea where she was. She found herself lying on a couch in a simple yet quite comfortable house, somewhere nearby. She could hear footsteps and the faint sound of dishes. Suddenly, a familiar male voice prayed, and Silvio sat beside her, handing her a cup of fragrant drink. Paulina immediately remembered everything and went pale. Silvio watched her carefully and asked, How are you feeling? You scared me a lot. Nothing happened, thank you. I just got very emotional, that's all, Paulina replied. It's curious, but it seems like we've met before. Your face looks familiar to me. Have we met? Silvio asked. Paulina denied, shaking her head, and took the cup from his hands. What's this? The scent of red berries, she took a sip with pleasure and then finished the drink. It's blackcurrant tea with strawberry leaves, quite simple. My grandfather taught me, Silvio replied. This is your residence, but how did we get here? Paulina asked. I'm sorry, but I used your car. My village is very close to the bridge, he said suddenly, putting on a weak smile. I still don't know your name, he said, hesitantly. Paulina, she replied with a smile. 
Even with this slight smile, her seriousness dissipated, and her eyes lit up with a strange brightness. For the first time in a long time, Paulina felt happy. Silvio revealed himself to be an intelligent, caring, kind, and cheerful man. Paulina felt a genuine apprehension in believing what was happening. Ricardo was never like this, always demanding obedience from her. However, it was important to Silvio to know what she wanted, he tried to make her feel good in every situation. He visited her frequently in the city, and they strolled through the nearest park, dined in a cozy restaurant, spent weekends away from the city. A few months after they met, Silvio proposed to Paulina. I love Silvio deeply, soon I will be his wife. Surely we will visit you, and you will see that I am right, mother, my dear, how happy I am for you, be happy, said Anna's mother, wiping tears of joy. A few days later, Diana couldn't bear it and bought a ticket hastily to see her daughter and her, lancively wanting to meet Silvio, get to know him, share with him how wonderful Paulina was. Beg him not to hurt her, take care of her. When Diana arrived, Paulina was not home. Silvio opened the door and welcomed her with a kind smile. Hi, Paulina, she warned me of your arrival. I was planning to meet you at the airport, but she said you hadn't informed me. I will, Silvio, thank you, but I bought the ticket last minute. Well, come in, make yourself at home. I'll prepare the kettle to make some tea. Silvio and Diana started a conversation. He talked a bit about himself, and then began to talk about Paulina. She has always been a quiet girl, loved music, said Diana. She never told me anything about it. One day I invited her to a karaoke bar, but she refused, said Silvio. It was all her ex-husband Ricardo's fault, said Diana. He came to our town for work and that's how he met her. Ricardo was 11 years older than her, she was just a young girl and became strongly attracted to him, lost all sense of judgment. My husband and I didn't like him, he was arrogant, full of himself. However, Paulina didn't see him that way. He proposed to her, and a month later, took her away. Obviously, we can't speak ill of the dead, but Ricardo wasn't looking for a wife, he was looking for a housekeeper. He had a history before Paulina, it seems his wife ran away and sued him for all his belongings, leaving him with nothing. But that wasn't Paulina's fault, of course. She never complained to us, she endured everything in silence, but I could tell she was living a difficult life. When Paulina was in the hospital after the accident, I was by her side and saw how much she was suffering. Initially, I thought she was shaken by Ricardo's death, but it turned out to be something else. He lost control on the bridge, collided with another car. Paulina lost a child. It's been five years now and she still can't overcome it. It's been five very difficult years, Silvio interrupted, embarrassed. Which bridge was it? I'm not sure. I believe it was near a village, said Diana. And did other people die in the accident besides your son-in-law? Silvio asked, the woman's eyes filling with tears. Yes, innocent people died, and it's all Ricardo's fault. He caused a scandal behind the wheel, got distracted. A boy lost his life, his mother lost her life, and the man seems to have survived. Yes, he survived, Silvio said, silently recalling that terrible day when he held his son's still hand. At one point, he looked beside him and saw the stranger, the woman lying on the sidewalk, unconscious, her pale and unfortunate face remained etched in his memory, somewhere deep in his mind. However, an immeasurable sadness drowned out all the memories, only now, after Diana's words, did Silvio's memories begin to return, and the first thing that occurred to him was the face of the woman lying on the sidewalk. What happened, Silvio? Diana asked, noticing how pale he had become. It's me. I'm the man who survived the accident, and my family is dead, he said. Oh my god, Diana said, pressing her hand against her lips. At that moment, the cheerful Paulina emerged from the apartment. She then went to kiss Silvio, but he pushed her away. 
it was you, you and Ricardo, you took the life of my wife and my son, and you knew it, you knew and didn't tell me. How could you? I trusted you and found out you betrayed their memory. No, no, Silvio, pleaded Paulina, it's not like that, Silvio. I couldn't tell you, Silvio. I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't, lying to myself all the time because I had to do it, said Silvio. Because I love you, said Paulina to Silvio. Then, Silvio left the kitchen and quickly gathered his things. A minute later, the front door closed, and Silvio left Paulina forever. He couldn't forgive her silence, mommy, Paulina cried in her mother's arms. But why am I so unlucky in life? Why am I so unhappy, mommy? What's wrong with me? I really love Silvio, I love him, I want to be with him, so I was afraid to tell him the truth. Please, my daughter, let's leave here, I don't want to leave you alone. Paulina looked at her mother and felt her, she no longer had the strength to resist. Suddenly, she felt very weak, dizzy, her eyes darkened. Paulina leaned on her mother's arm, slowly sat down. Time passed, and it was the end of autumn. Raindrops beat against the window, but there was such an oppressive silence in Diana's apartment that nothing disturbed the tranquility except for the beats on the windows. Suddenly, the doorbell rang loudly. The elderly lady, exhausted, got up from the couch and walked to the hallway, looked at herself in the mirror, adjusted the black band on her head, and opened the door. Silvio was there. How long did it take you to find her? Between you and me, we have a lot to talk about. Five minutes later, they were sitting at the kitchen table, and Diana informed that Paulina had gone to a funeral that morning. My great aunt passed away, my husband is still at her house, and I came home to rest. Don't worry about Paulina, she's fine, I'm going to change now, and you and I will go see her. Where is she? You're making me worried. Have patience, you'll see. I believe you'll be pleased with the surprise she has for you. Paulina was sitting in the maternity room, breastfeeding her newborn daughter, when the door opened and a nurse appeared. Why don't you go to the window? You're being urgently called, the whole garden is filled with flowers. Are you confused about something? I have no one coming to visit me, I'm not married, murmured Paulina, surprised, but nonetheless she approached the window, tears streaming down her eyes. On the rain-soaked pavement was written in colors, Paulina, I'm sorry, I love you, said Silvio on his knees and offered her a bouquet of roses. Paulina held the girl against the glass and saw how happy Silvio was at that moment. A nurse returned to the room and handed Paulina another baby, a boy. Paulina took him and turned to the window. Two by two, Paulina's parents came to fetch Silvio. I'm immensely happy you're back, have you forgiven me? It wasn't your fault, Paulina. I didn't realize it immediately, but I ended up realizing and I almost lost another child and my daughter, besides you. You saved me, you not only gave me children, but also life. Why didn't you tell me about the baby? I didn't know either, I came here with my mother thinking I was sick, when I went to the doctor I found out I was pregnant. If you knew how happy that made me. Once I couldn't bear it and tried to call you, but the phone wasn't available, I accidentally threw away the paper with the numbers. My God, Paulina, thank you for the babies. I can't believe my luck. Now I have three children, and one of them will be forever remembered in my memory. Paulina sighed and looked into Silvio's eyes. We have the right to be happy, don't we, Paulina? Silvio asked, nestling happily in the arms of his beloved. Certainly, darling. I love you very much, said Paulina. The time for sadness had come to an end. It was time for joy, happiness, and love. If you enjoyed this story, leave your opinion in the comments below. And of course, leave your like and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. A big hug and see you soon.